If you want to check out a review on one of my favourite Speyside Scotch whisky distilleries, keep watching and let's talk drinks. Hi friends, welcome back or welcome for the first time. Today I'm going to do a review on the Balveni 12 year old double wood and I'm kind of surprised that I haven't done one of these uh, reviews before because this stuff just flies out of the uh, out of the doors at 18th Amendment bars and, and Manhattan and so forth. And um, it is probably Balveni for me, one of my favorite space side uh, single malt whiskies or, or distillers. Now, why is it called double wood? It's because it is originally uh, um, aged in first fill and second fill American oak barrels for around 12 years. And then what they'll do is they'll then put that whiskey into ex Oloroso sherry cask for about another two months. And that's why it's called double wood. The distillery has been around since about 1892 and it's just next door to Glenfiddich. It's owned by William Grant and Sons. They've also got Kanimbi, Balveni, Glenfiddich and Monkey Shoulder. Um, great brands, um, their portfolio. They've got some great rums and, and gins and everything else, vodkas. But um, I really prefer their whiskies the most. The only thing that I can say that I'm really disappointed about Balveni is they have a Balveni double wood 17 year old and it's been discontinued and I didn't know about that because I would have bought a shitload before uh, that happened and unfortunately now I've got to buy it at auction and pay ridiculous prices like two or three times more than what I originally paid however the customers love it or our guests love it and um, just got to pay for it can't do much about it so enough talking let's start pouring I love the sound of that cork too, by the way. Oh. Scotland, I want to come and visit you. Locked away for all these years. All right, let's give it a bit of a nose. Okay, automatically. Marzipan. Heather. Creamy vanilla. A little bit of caramel there, uh, but just a touch. Um, I'm getting a little bit of that sort of uh, the, the dried fruits, which I think is coming from the Oloroso cask, but it's not overpowering like some of the other sherry cask expressions that I've had, right? Which, which I'm a, I love sherry bombs, don't get me wrong. Um, but I, I like this because it sort of lingers in the background. Maybe it's because it's only been in there and it's, I guess it's finished for those last two months. And I, I have a feeling, could be wrong, comment below if I am wrong, that uh, Dave Stewart, the master distiller, master blender, was the first person to sort of finish in Oloroso cask. I know that other brands have been using Oloroso cask for many years. Glendronic, for example, they will age in in a few different types of casks and, and blend that together. But as far as finishing, let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, but, but I like that. It's not, it's, it's just sitting there in, in the background, which is fantastic. Whew. Okay, let's have a taste. Oh, you know I'm sold already, right? Vanilla. Caramel, sherry, honey. Not so much heather. I feel as though the heather's been a bit overtaken by the Oloroso. Some nice nuttiness there. Uh, marzipan, pecan, hazelnut, strange. A really nice sweetness there. Butterscotch, fudge. It reminds me a little bit of a, of a nice bourbon, but not so sweet, if that makes sense. But um, really, really nice. This is a very, very well-made whiskey. The finish, I would say, is medium. I'm getting a nice sort of little bit of spicy oak there. Some apple marshmallows. I don't know why that comes to mind, but marshmallows is another one. Clove. Cinnamon. Yeah, this is bloody delicious. 
what I like about it is I'm getting this really nice sort of lingering feeling in my mouth. Um, and looking at the legs, you know what, it's, for me, it, it, it is a medium finish, but it's, it's borderline a little bit, a little bit longer. It's got a bit of oiliness in there, which is what I like. Um, oh, I can't really say anything bad about it, to be honest. How would I drink it? Neat. A little bit of water, if you like some ice. I wouldn't go too much on the ice, but you know, if you're going to use ice though, I, I always suggest that you use a really big block ice. You can buy molds or cut them yourselves as we do at 18, but don't use sort of flaky wet ice because you don't want it to over dilute. Uh, I always say old fashioned because it's one of those cocktails that you can use with a, a good whiskey, but I wouldn't do anything too harsh. You know, like too many polarizing flavors that go in there, like citruses and, and fruits and stuff like that, because I think it would definitely sort of kill the flavor of a really well-made whiskey. Um, if you are used to drinking straight, like I am, that's that's the best way that I would drink it. So uh, cheers um, to Ross Blaney. Haven't seen you for a while. He is uh, the man that knows everything about Balvenie here in Australia. Hopefully I will see him up at Bar Week in September. Uh, we can have a few drams together, but love to get him down to do some proper reviews because no one wants to listen to me talking crap all the time. We need to hear from these guys as well. So uh, cheers. Please subscribe, like. If there's something you'd love me to review, let me know. And we'll see you again soon on Let's Talk Drinks.